I want to bring in Congresswoman, House Foreign Affairs Committee member, and House Small Business Committee member, Claudia Tenney. Congresswoman, good morning. And those small businesses are retail mm -hmm. gasoline owners. 60% of the, the retail gas stations are owned by, you know, mom and pop businesses and, or, or families, and they're probably scratching their heads as well over this, uh, this new Biden directive. What do you say? Oh, it's absolutely economically illiterate. Most of these gas stations don't make money on the gas. The price of gas is a commodity. Many of them produce, uh, don't produce anything, but they have to create uh, snacks and other things they sell in the convenience store in order to make any kind of profit at all, uh, just because in, in many cases they're not making money, particularly with this, you know, with the, with the price of gas not being uh, part of their uh, stream. So same thing with farmers. We, they don't get to determine the price of milk. Uh, it's determined by the federal government or determined by another entity. So, I mean, to think that these businesses shouldn't be allowed to make a profit, even though it's small, uh, in order to pay their employees to cover the costs of, of regulations, especially in states like New York and California, and the taxes are really high. So it's economic illiteracy, again, from President Biden. Yeah, and I, my, my colleague Angela Morbito is with me on the show, Congresswoman. I want to bring her in. We were talking about this earlier, that, you know, look what they're paying for. And this is what the Congresswoman is talking about here. It's freight, labor, utilities, the real estate, uh, to wherever their station is, credit card fees, Angela. They're all getting hit with that. That's right. The Biden administration oh, has a fundamental misunderstanding of, of not just economics, but of how gas stations work. Uh, I would wonder, I would question how they actually think it operates. It's like they're saying that gas station owners get up in the morning and decide how greedy they want to be that day, and then that's the price you pay at the pump. So, Congresswoman, I would ask if the Biden administration has really painted itself into a corner here with their proposal to suspend the federal gas tax. If they suspend the gas tax now, do you think in their worldview that they would just be enabling the so-called greed they think is out there in the world? Yeah, this is the problem is this is a temporary measure and they're toying with it. Of course, they are doing this in New York State. Oh, we're gonna lift the gas tax. Well, it really didn't change much. The price of gas went over $5. Now it's $485, $490 in the, in the region where I am. Where, by the way, we don't have a lot of public transportation up here in beautiful upstate New York, where we are the breadbasket of New York. This is where the farmers are. This is where they're paying enormous fees for diesel. This is where we're not getting natural gas. The price of fertilizer is really high, even though we have access to these things. They're all being cut off. So when you just do a, a cosmetic fix, like temporarily change the gas tax, you're only encouraging higher gas prices, and you're only uh, making it harder and harder for consumers, and also not only these small businesses, but farmers as well to survive, and this is what they don't understand. It's the basic principles of shutting off our energy independence and shutting off our ability to produce and our ability to drive down the price. You know, when you have more competition and you have more abundant supply, you're gonna bring the price down. You're also gonna have uh, better quality. So they just don't look at this from an economic viewpoint like small business owners have to and must do in order to survive. Yeah, no, and you know, Congresswoman, that's showing up in the polls. You've got this new Harris poll that found 71% of Americans don't believe President Biden should even run for re-election. 30% say he's too old. 45% said he's a bad president. And you've said before he's out of touch. Yeah, absolutely. I think this president is just showing he's ignorant, he's arrogant, he's elitist, and he's also corrupt. He's just looking, I think he, it's not a matter of age. I know, I, I met a hundred year old yesterday at this amazing parade in Canandaigua. Uh, and this guy was incredible, walking around, handing out candy in a parade. This is a hundred year old veteran. It's amazing. It's not his age, it's his illiteracy. He obviously has some kind of cognitive problem. And no Democrat is looking to Joe Biden with these cratering poll numbers to actually prop up their campaign, contrast that with President Trump. People are looking for his support in order to win primaries, in order to gain uh, uh, a, a, an edge over their competition. This isn't happening with President Biden because people see it. You can't hide in plain view the problems that everyday Americans are seeing, regardless of party. This guy is a disaster. And the biggest problem the Democrats has, not only are they focusing on the wrong policies, they don't have a bench. They don't have someone who can come in and take the place of Joe Biden. Kamala Harris is a disaster. They force Bernie Sanders, a self-proclaimed communist, out. Where are they going to go? They don't have anywhere to go. 
and they're in a real pickle. Now, real quick before you go, don't have a lot of time, but I got to yeah. ask you about what's happening here in New York State with Governor Hochul. She just signed a new gun control bill, and that's after the Supreme Court ruling. Look, our state, and I'm, I live here too, we have some of the toughest <laughs> gun laws, or we had some of the toughest gun laws in the country, and we still have skyrocketing crime in our city and in our state. Your reaction? Yeah, incredible. This bill, uh, this case actually, uh, the case that Justice Thomas, uh, the Bruin case, originated in New York from people trying to get a concealed carry permit to try to keep and bear arms, as emphasized by Justice Thomas. Kathy Hochul is just taking rights away. This is a hypocritical politician who ran in a Republican seat and had an A rating from NRA, now has an F, and now is just looking for that knee-jerk reaction to take lawful gun owners rights away when the problem is why don't we crack down on unlawful gun owners uh, gun right gun rights people out there who are illegally uh, bringing guns into our communities they're not being prosecuted we aren't prosecuting anyone in new york that's why you see this major crime wave mm -hmm. instead of dealing with the root causes uh, they're just attacking the lawful gun owners and i think that her new gun laws actually violate the supreme court's rule and there could be injunctive relief and a possibility of upholding that Supreme Court decision to protect lawful gun owners across New York. That'll be interesting. We'll keep an eye out for that. Thank you for that, Congresswoman uh, Claudia Tenney. It's good to see you this morning. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. From Tucker Carlson tonight.